I just want to tell you, Goldfinger, I got this uh, back. I just took it out of the box. And I heard something moving around in the box before I even opened it. And there's something inside this amp moving around. God the mighty man. Did you hear that? If this guy fixed this, you said, and solder everything back together, but it wasn't working, why is there something moving around? It sounds like multiple objects are moving around in this box. So I'm about to take the lid off and see what the heck this is. Be right back. Alright man, this right here was inside the amp, just being bounced around and jingling around. Uh, about the only thing I can think of is somehow the nut fell off at some point. I'm just going to plug that hole up when I send it back to you. And it's just been in here just jingling around man, hope it ain't hurt anything. But the only thing I can see is he attempted to put... Well, I ain't going to say he attempted. He put the, the metal clad back on here. I'm going to remove that and clean it up and test it. It looks like this one over here is still on just fine. And this leg back here is up. I don't know if he left it up or what. I can see that the resistor under that brand new combiner is blown. I get so sick of that happening sometimes. Yeah, it's toast. That's just there to smoke. That ain't got nothing to do with the amp running properly. So, man, let's hope this ain't going to turn into something crazy, man. <laughs> I hope not, because I've got some projects i got to get started on tonight. Like right now, like yesterday. Alright, we'll be back. All right, Mr. Goldfinger, got you all straightened out, brother. Yeah. This is one of them deals right here, man. It's really hard to say 100% what was causing this issue. Other than you, you, you did have another little small warp up under this area right here of the board, which I fixed. I also went ahead and lifted up this board just a tad bit. Meaning I didn't tighten down the screws super tight. I tightened them down good enough to hold the board just to be on the extra safe side. You blew another one of these 10 microhenry chokes. I went ahead and uh, you, you blew the uh, resistor that was right here too. So I went ahead and replaced that one right there. This diode was being used right there. I went ahead and switched that out with a brand new 4148 diode which is what you see right here. Which is what you see right there. Okay. Now here's another thing I went ahead and did because <clears throat> even though this is class C now even though this is class C the bias, the, with the bias circuit still being hooked up these resistors are still being shunted to ground through this 1.8 ohm resistor over here on both boards and it's just wasted heat it's just wasted heat it's wasted energy there's no reason for it to be there just to just to be on the safe side man i was just going to leave it the way it was just in case some, somebody up you know wanted to ab bias this in the future to make it a little quicker for them but just to be safe to make this a true class C with no AB bias circuit even in place. I went ahead and removed the uh, wire that carries the voltage from this board to this board. Okay. And then what I went ahead and did <clears throat> is I unsoldered this lead right here to this sandbar resistor that was soldered over here where this lamp right here is soldered to. And that's this little pad right here is what gets the DC voltage after it flows through this 10 microhenry choke right here behind it. Okay, and that's where your bias voltage begins to be brought down through this resistor in the one point, what is it, an eight, 1.8 on 8 ohm resistor to ground. I went ahead and unsolder that and just to keep this from, so it ain't moving back and forth, I just soldered it to ground right here just to hold it. You know, this right here just goes through 
uh, this one point to point out on the ground so it doesn't hurt anything at all just solder it to ground it's out of circuit it's not in circuit anymore so I just soldered at the ground so it wouldn't be moving I could have just removed all this but the only reason I didn't if somebody ever gets this box in the future and they do want to bias it at least they'll have all the parts in here already that they need to bias it with and all they'll have to do is add a piece of wire and move these chokes right here back to their pads on each uh, four fill section, two fill section. So, uh, let's see, what else did I do? Uh, I went ahead and cleaned this thing a little bit for you too. And as you, as I showed you in the other video, I went ahead and grabbed me another 1200 out of my bag of uh, Texas Star parts I have over here. And I put you one on there that's, that was right there at 1200 Pico Fair. That one was reading like 1170, uh, I believe it was. No big deal. I just grabbed another one and put it on there, you know. I, I didn't know if that thing had been ran really hot when that happened with you. I, I don't really know what caused it, but I'm going to give you some safety pointers here you might not want to listen to, <laughs> but I'm going to give them to you anyway. But And like we talked about, I went ahead and put some silver bearing solder on this on the right side as you'll see the right side isn't as shiny as the left side that's silver bearing solder okay so that right there is going to have to get a lot harder hotter before this thing falls and that is one thing about having the amp turned upside down if anything gets hot you know it's going to fall on top of the lid and you know that can be a good thing it's better than it falling down on you know on top of circuit or dripping on top of circuit now that is one positive thing about that but uh those should never be getting that hot to do that in the first place to be honest with you but so i went ahead and soldered that back for you and this thing is up and and, and kicking booty again man i've been here hammering on it for a little bit get, getting the heat sink good and warm I wonder what slug. Go oh, in the corner, in the corner, in the corner. We just letting this mop flop out here around the northeast end of Georgia. Oh, 1883, the gatekeeper. Getting down, getting down, getting down. So she's back kicking booty, man. And of course, we ain't hitting her hard. We're just hitting her with the radio. Four watt radio. No. Right there, about 170, close to 180 RMS. I know you ain't going to want to hear this, man, but in the end, this is your amp. You do as you wish with it. If this was my amp, I'd hit it just like I just hit it just then, man. <laughs> but it is Class C. And I do understand that. You know, you can drive it a little harder. I, I, what I probably would do is I'd probably hook it up to my Cobra 29, my hot radio right there, and just let her rip. She'd probably be doing up six, 700 watts then. But man, you just got to remember, these HGs are not Toshibas. And they can't take the abuse and the overdrive like Toshibas can take. So just be kind with them. You know, don't be dumping a big strong two pill. And I know you get, my dead key's low. I have no dead key. Well, like I told you on the phone, man, I can take uh, 10,000 watts and drive it into this amplifier with uh, no dead key. <laughs> I can turn my dead key down to nothing and just audio 10,000 watts into this amp, and it will fry on impact, I promise you. But, you know, I ain't saying there's nothing to that saying about dead key, because dead key, dead carrier is always active while you're talking. I'm sitting here talking, you know, oh, gatekeeper, 1883. No, letting the mop flop. As I'm talking right here, you have a constant dead key, which is pretty low. Let's see here. I got one watt going into it. This is a thousand watt slug, RMS. See, it's only creating a 50 watt dead key. But while I'm talking like this right here, that 50 watt dead key is always present even though it's swinging. See, it's swinging forward on the RMS meter. That's what you want to see. It's always present. So that means 
that's why they say your dead key is what's going to be constantly pulling that power at all times so no matter how much it's swinging this net that carrier is always there that's why they say the dead key is what can kill you or what can hurt you or what can run your stuff hot because it's constant it stays there the swing fluctuate and comes back down you know and it's resting a little bit before it swings back up <laughs> Well, we got this thing back up and running, man. I hate whatever happened to happen. I don't know really what caused it. This is just sometimes you do a repair. You don't really know what caused the issue. Because pretty much I got in here. I checked each section. Each section was doing output. I thought you had a blown pill, honestly. But you didn't. Each section uh, showed output. So at that point, and you know, at that point I knew this right here was blown. So I went ahead and took that off. Started checking for some shorts and stuff on that end. Started checking this and that. Replaced this resistor over here. Then I was noticing there was a short from here to ground. That's when I went ahead and uh, do, do my little thing I do to kind of to, to fix a warp up under the board. Because this is an old amp, man. This is an this is a white line. This amp's old, probably close to 30 years old, if not 25 plus. It's an old amp, so sometimes you gotta do maintenance like that to it. But let me get this thing back to you, man, so you can get the hammering on it and enjoying it, man. You only got to enjoy it for like what a day? <laughs> I hope it lasts a year this time. Plus twenty. How about that? Twenty one years I want it to last you, man. Alright, buddy, we'll see you. Have fun, man. Much luck to you with this amplifier, buddy. Hope it don't have to ever come back here. That's not the game I'm in. I want it to Stay with you and work from here on out. We'll see you, man. I got to get on this 12 pill now. Bye-bye.